Hey team, we're going to talk about how you can build and ship React apps with no JavaScript using Astro, the JavaScript-based static site builder. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Astro is a new static site builder built by the team that brought you Snowpack. It promises a lot of great things, like being able to bring your own framework, whether it's React, Svelte, or Vue, but it's also promising that by default, it ships zero JavaScript to the browser. This is a really great thing because performance really helps for providing a great user experience. And it also helps with search engines when trying to rank your site. If we look here at astro.build, which is the homepage of Astro, we can see that they're literally only loading one JavaScript file. And that's because they're loading Google Tag Manager. It's not coming from the site itself. From the site itself, it's only loading the document and some CSS as well as some images. So we're going to learn how we can use Astro to build our own React application where we're shipping zero JavaScript. Now, one thing to keep in mind, as we see here, Astro is still in an early beta. So that means, as we also see, that it still might be missing some features and you might be hitting some bugs. So keep in mind, though, the maintainers of, this, of the project say that if you are able to compile a site and you're able to hit it in your browser, it should be fine and, and production ready. But we're going to really look at this from an introductory point of view, how we can get up and running with React. So we really shouldn't hit anything with this first project. So we're going to start off by working right through the instructions on the project GitHub. If you followed along with any of my tutorials in the past, it might look a little bit longer than most, like if you're trying to use the Next.js starter or even the Gatsby starter, but bear with me, it's still pretty simple to get started and we're going to work through it right now. So in my terminal, I'm going to first create a new directory. So I'm going to run make dir and I'm going to say my astro app, and then I'm going to simply cd into that directory. Now, one thing with Astro that we need to keep in mind is they only support versions 14.15.1 and above. So that means we need to make sure that we are either having that node version installed or a higher version, or if you're using NVM, which is recommended, that we're making sure that we're using that version for our project. So to start, I'm going to run NVM use 14, where in particular, I have my version 14 set for 14.15.4. 14 14 .4. Now, if I didn't have that installed, I could run NVM install 14.15.1 or anything above that number and then use that version instead. But this is going to work since it's above that number and we can get started. So next I can run NPM init astro where it's going to go through and it's going to give us a few options for how we want to start our project. Now we could choose the blog documentation or portfolio, but just for our purposes, we're going to get started with the generic starter kit. So I'm going to hit enter and what it's going to do similar to a Next.js starter, it's going to copy down the project files to give us a good starting point for how we want to get started. Now, the difference here, as you're starting to notice, is we still need to do a little bit more work than we typically do. Now to start, we need to install the dependencies manually, which isn't too big of a deal. So I'm going to run npm install, where it's going to go through and install all those dependencies right from npm, just like the Next.js starter would automatically do. And then it's going to go through and prepare our project. Now, as you see for this second step, as those dependencies are getting installed, we also can install or rather initialize a Git project. Now, for my purposes here, I'm not going to bother with that, but if you're going to be using this project for something in the future, if you're starting this for a new project that you're going to maintain, this would probably be a good idea to get Git set up on your project. And then finally, after everything is said and done, we can run npm start, which is going to start up our development server. And similar to Next.js, it's going to make that available on localhost 3000. But as you can see, since this is the first time that we ran this project, Snowpack is going to go through, it's going to optimize some things, compile some things, and really get our project set up so that it can be more performant for subsequent loads. But as we can see, if I load this port 3000 inside of my browser, we can see that we now have our new Astro application. Now, if this is the first time that you're opening an Astro project, we might be able to see that if we go to source pages index.astro, which is our homepage, we don't have any nice syntax highlighting there, but we can fix that. We can install a new extension and I'm going to search for Astro right inside of VS Code. And we see we have a couple different ones, but what we want to select is the language support for Astro from the Astro author. 
So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna install it. And we can see that once we go back to our file, we have some nice syntax highlighting and we're ready to go. Now looking at this page, we see two very important things here. Now, first of all, we can see that towards the bottom here, we have some pretty basic HTML. The one thing that's a little bit different is we have this Tor, which if you're familiar with JSX or React, that just looks like a component invocation. Now, if we look at the very top of the page, we see these three dashes where inside of it, we see that import statement. Now, inside of these three dashes, we have the ability to run JavaScript so that we can do things like import components like we're doing here, but also do things like fetch data, which we'll see in a little bit. But ultimately what this is doing, similar to React or any of your other frameworks, is it's importing this component in, which if we look at it is just a similar thing as we just saw on the homepage, where it's pulling in some HTML and it's also making use of being able to bring in components. Now, the other thing that's probably more important inside of an Astro project is the Astro config. Now, by default, there's nothing really configured here. We can see that there's some things commented out. That way it makes it a little bit easier for us to see what we can do, but we don't really need to do anything by default here. The cool thing, though, is if we look at Astro back inside of the browser, we can look in the network tab where if we refresh this page, we can see that we literally are only getting that document. We're getting some CSS and we're getting those SVGs to provide both the Favicon and the Astro logo itself. We're not getting anything else, which is the beautiful thing where this is going to be a very lean and performant application by default. We can see that we're only transferring 8.2 kilobytes, but we're here because we want to also install React and be able to use React as our component system. So how can we do that inside of an Astro project? So the way that Astro handles being able to support a bunch of different UI frameworks is the concept of a renderer, where imagine it's kind of like a bundle or a function where it's the ultimate goal of a renderer is to be able to one, as we can see here, it's able to render a component, the markup into a string of HTML at build time. And it has a second job where it's able to rehydrate that HTML string into an interactive component inside of the browser. So between those two things, those are the requirements that each of these renderers need to have as a responsibility. So that means we can already do that with a bunch of the other frameworks that already exist, but that what it means in addition to that is we can also create our own custom render, which we're not gonna do here, but it's a cool thing that we know that we can really plug in any kind of component UI framework into this by building a renderer for Astro. To get started with React and Astro though, we have to do two things. First of all, we need to install React along with the renderer for React, and then we need to set it up as a configuration. So I'm gonna copy this package name and I'm gonna go back over into my project. I'm gonna run npm install. I'm gonna add that render package, React, React DOM, and I'm gonna save it as a dev dependency. Now, saving it as, as a dev dependency isn't really necessarily required here. Because we're packaging up this bundle and deploying it as a static application, we don't need any of these things for production. It's going to pull those things in and send it for us. This isn't necessarily as important for just building a static application because we're not going to be publishing it anywhere and people aren't going to actually be pulling in those dependencies, but it's good to get in the habit of organizing your dependencies that way. But now, as we can see, we also want to take this render that we just installed and add it inside of our Astro config. So I'm going to head back over to my code editor and open back up that config where we're finally going to actually add something here. I'm going to say renders, renderers, if I spell it right, and I'm going to set that up as a new array where I'm going to pass in that render for React. Now, at this point, we really shouldn't know, notice anything different with our project because we're not actually doing anything React, but let's change that. So I'm going to create a new component under the components folder called button.jsx. And let's say we're going to import react from react. We're going to create a new constant called button, which is going to be our new component. We of course want to pass in some children, which we're going to display inside of the button, but we're ultimately going to export that default button. And inside we're going to return a new button where we're going to simply pass through the children from that button element. Now, if I open back up my index.astro or my homepage, I'm gonna now duplicate that tour line. I'm gonna change that to button and make sure that I also update the 
file extension, but now let's see what happens if I take this button, I scroll down and right below my H1, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add a paragraph tag, I'm gonna have a button, let's say, hello, Astro. I'm going to save that at the invitation. We head over to our browser and refresh the page. We can see that I now have that button. Now, as we mentioned before, part of the cool thing about Astro is that we're shipping zero JavaScript. Now, we just added React into our project. How can we still not be shipping, shipping any JavaScript? So let's open back up our network tab and see what's happening now. So I'm gonna refresh the page and see everything come in. And we see that we still see absolutely no JavaScript. So what Astro is doing is it's rendering out those React components into HTML strings, and it's shipping that without any of the other JavaScript that comes along with it. Because it's able to do that, we don't have to include any of that JavaScript, and we can see that it's super performant, and we're still only shipping 8.3 kilobytes, even though we're using a React component. So now that we're actually using React components, what if we wanted to add data into the project? If we're not loading any JavaScript, how can we make, say, a client-side request or load some data inside of React so that we can add it to our page? To show how this works, I'm going to create a second component. And inside of my com components folder, I'm going to create a new file called characters.jsx. And inside, I'm going to copy and paste my button over and change that to characters spell that right but this time i'm going to make this an unordered list i'm going to change my prop to characters and inside of my unordered list i'm going to say i want to map out for each character i'm going to return a new list element that simply has that character's name and let's also add an image so we can say the character image URL, and we can see that this image URL is a pattern from the API that I'm going to use in a second here. We can also add an alt because it's always important to add an alt to your projects. And we're going to say photo of character dot name. And then finally, let's also add a width to that just so that it's a little bit easier to see. I'm just going to make that 150 to start here. So now we have this simple component that runs through a list of characters, but how can we actually add data to it and then ultimately add it to our project so that we can see all those characters? If you remember before, I mentioned that inside of these three dashes, we're able to add JavaScript. So what that means is we're able to add a new constant right here called characters, which we can set equals to, where we're going to use the fetch API, which is available inside of Astro projects. And we're also going to use the await keyword because all of this JavaScript is wrapped with the async, so we're able to use the async await syntax for being able to manage our request. But we're gonna say we're going to await fetch, and I'm gonna pass in this final space API, and then I'm gonna say at the end here, then I'm gonna take that response, and I'm going to take that response and turn it into JSON, which is going to get returned into this character's constant. Now, before I use this though, as we remember, we created this new component. So I'm gonna duplicate this this button to change this to characters. And let's see what happens if we scroll down here and maybe right above the tour, I'm gonna to add a new component. I'm gonna add my characters prop to equal the characters constant that we just created above. And let's see what happens when we load this page. So now when I refresh the page, we can see that we have all of my character data that I just added through that request. Now, it doesn't look pretty. We're not going to really necessarily worry about styling in this particular demo, but we can see that we were still able to add dynamic data to the page. Now, if we open back up our network tab, just like before, and we hit refresh, we can see that we're still not loading any JavaScript because Astro is making that request at build time and it's passing in that data as a prop into the React component so that we're able to still render out all of that data, but we're able to do so statically without shipping any of that JavaScript. We can kind of see how that works, where if we add a console log at the end of characters, where if we did so, we might typically expect to be able to see this inside of the browser. But if we open up the browser and look at the console, we don't actually see anything. Now, if I open up my terminal, I can see, I see all that beautiful character data. And the reason is because that request is happening in Node, so I'm able to see it inside of my terminal. So again, that means that the JavaScript, the console log, isn't actually getting shipped to the browser, meaning it's not able to log that value inside of the browser for us.
But if it's not able to actually run any JavaScript in the browser, how can we do things like we would typically do with React components where we might want to add some interactions, such as what if I wanted to trigger some kind of event if I clicked on this button? Where right now it's not doing anything, of course, because I have it set up to not do anything. But what if we wanted to add an event, maybe just a simple alert for the browser? Back inside of my button component, I'm going to create a new function and let's call that handle on click. And inside of that, I'm going to say alert hello astro. And we're going to say when this button is clicked on click, we want to fire that function. So now let's head back over to our browser and refresh the page. And if I click that, we can see that absolutely nothing is happening. Now, as you might suspect, that's because we're not loading any JavaScript. So how is it going to be able to run that JavaScript if it's not loading anything? Now, this is where Astro's hydration model comes in. Now, if we look at the GitHub page, we can see that we what they call it is partial hydration, where if we're looking here by default, it's only going to send that HTML version, which we saw in the network tab where we have absolutely no JavaScript, but we're only going to get the HTML output of that component, meaning we can't do anything dynamic. But they also provide these other APIs, including load, idle, and visible, where it allows us to provide that interaction and load that JavaScript as soon as the triggering event for that particular component happens. Now, if we look through this, we can see that the first one here, load, this means that it'll render and load that JavaScript on page load. We can also use idle, which will use the request idle callback. So that way we can make sure that things are a little bit calmed down before we actually try to load that JavaScript or we can use the visible, which means it's using the inter intersection observer where it's only going to load that if the page scrolls down and sees that and makes it visible. Now we're not gonna cover all of these, but let's see what happens when we use the load. Back over inside of my index.astro file, I'm gonna head to my button and I'm gonna add colon load to my button component invocation. So now if I reload that page and I hit that button, we can see that I get my hello astro alert. Now, if I look inside of the dev console, we can already see that inside of the console itself that we have that React message that we might typically expect if we're using a React application. But inside the network tab, if we refresh, we can now see that it looks a lot differently and we're seeing a lot of JavaScript files. Now, particularly, we can see that it has things like hot module reload, where it's also using this load listener to actually load our button and our component, but we're loading our button module and we're also loading React and a bunch of other things that's helping Astro actually run this in development mode. But what this ultimately means is we don't have to load this JavaScript, which is a lot. We can see now that it's up to one megabyte in size as, a, as opposed to the 8.3 kilobytes. But if we don't need to have any of that client side interaction, we don't have to load any of it. We can load it just by using React as a sort of like a template language. But the cool thing, even if we do need to load React and whatever other JavaScript in order to make our app interactive, which is super common inside of the web, another thing that we can see is because we use the load API, we can actually look at this little blue line here if you see scrolling over in the network tab, where that means that it's the DOM content loaded event, which means we're not loading that JavaScript. We can see all those events after there. We're not loading any of that until that on page load event actually occurs. This is a great thing because it's helping to prioritize loading resources to ultimately help provide a better user experience. And speaking of that, if we wanted to do more than just have that unload, say we don't need anything until the page can settle down, we can use the idle callback, which will help even more. Or if we don't need to have anything, say we're adding comments at the bottom of blog posts and that never, that might potentially never even be seen. Or if somebody wants to scroll down to the bottom and add a comment, we can use the visible API where it's not going to load that JavaScript until somebody actually scrolls down and sees that comment system. And one last thing, just for full disclosure, I actually did hit a snag when trying to create this video. It looks like the starting kit actually was loading an older version of Astro that had a little bit of a bug. We can see here in my terminal, it was saying that we couldn't actually find that React render, which means it wasn't able to load any of the client side JavaScript inside of the browser. But what I did is I checked to see if my Astro package was outdated. I installed the latest, which at the time of recording this is 0.14.0. 
I installed that and then started back up my project and I was back up and running with Astro. But keep in mind, it is still in an early beta. You might hit those kind of snags, but we're at a great point where we can start playing around with these awesome concepts and this cool framework where we have a lot of potential for building performant web applications for people trying to visit our site or potential customers. The awesome thing about tools like Astro and other frameworks out there trying to do similar things is it's really trying to push the boundaries for what we actually need to ship to the people who are visiting our web applications. Can we provide as little JavaScript as we can to ultimately provide a better experience and helping those people who might not have super fast internet actually load our pages? Have you had some time to play around with Astro? Let me know what you think in the comments. While I personally think the developer experience is still a little rough compared to the more premium frameworks like Next.js, I think there's a lot of potential and I'm super excited to see where they take the project. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.